हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस लेक्चर ऑफ इंग्लिश लिटरेचर फॉर क्लास शास्त्री पार्ट थर्ड पेपर फर्स्ट टूडे वी विल स्टडी ऑफ द फेमस पोएट जी एम होपकिंस पोएम द सी एंड द स्काई लार्क फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल टाक अबाउट द फेमस पोएट जी एम होपकिंस हियर इज द पिक्चर ऑफ जी एम होपकिंस होपकिंस वॉज बोर्न ऑन ट्वेंटी एट जुलाई एटीन फोर्टी फोर एंड डाइड ऑन एट जून एटीन एटी नाइन ही वॉज द लीडिंग पोएट ऑफ विक्टोरियन पोएट्स ही वॉज एजुकेटेड बेलियल कॉलेज ऑक्सफोर्ड ही वॉज ए पोएट ऑफ मच ओरिजिनलिटी एंड स्किलफुल इनोवेटर इन रिदम ही रोट ए नंबर ऑफ शॉर्ट पोएम्स विच वर कलेक्टेड आफ्टर इज डेथ बाई रॉबर्ट ब्रिज होपकिंस टू डे इज रिगार्डेड एज वन ऑफ द मेजर पोएट्स इन द रियलम ऑफ इंग्लिश पोएट्री ऑल दो हिज इन्फ्लुएंस इज मोर टेक्निकल देन स्पिरिचुअल यट हिज एक्यूट सेंसिबिलिटी टू ब्यूटी हिज ओरिजिनल मेटाफर एंड हिज सिंसियरिटी कैन नॉट बी डिनाइड ही वॉज वेरी सेंसिटिव टू नेचुरल ब्यूटी ही वॉज इक्वली सेंसिटिव टू इट्स डेस्ट्रेक्शन रिक्स कार्ड होपकिंस द मोस्ट ओरिजिनल पोएट ऑफ द विक्टोरियन एज होपकिंस इज कंसिडर्ड एज इन्फ्लुएंशियल एज टी एस इलियट इन इनिशिएटिंग द मॉडर्न मोमेंट इन पोएट्री then we come on the discussion of the poem the sea and the skylark the sea and the skylark is a sonnet as you all know that sonnet is a short poem of 14 lines this sonnet was written in 1877 in a seaside town hopkins lived there about 3 years the theme of the poem The theme of the sonnet is a contrast between the life giving purity of nature and the sordidness of the civilization that man is creating. The town mentioned in the sonnet is Ryle in Wales, but the sonnet is not an attack particularly on the town or the people who lived in this town. It is general meditation on nature and man occasioned by a particular scene. main main ideas of the poem the poem was originally titled walking by the sea in the sonnet the sea and the skylark are described in the octave part then in the sustained part these two are contrasted with man the mood of the poet is joyous in the octave where he describes the natural sounds of the sea and the skylark singing but in the sustained part the mood of the poet changes and he becomes deeply pessimistic in the sonnet the poet criticizes the human beings the sonnet ends with deeply sense of loss at the thought now we discuss the text of this poem so in the here in the beginning lines of this poem here the poet is walking by the sea side he hears the sound coming from opposite directions these sounds are as old as the world itself the poet says that it is seemed that these sounds will never be ended and will remain forever from the right side he listens the noise of sea which at high tide strikes against the shore and rushes towards the ramps and then uh, recreates and this process continues this process will continue as long as the moon continues to wane and wax because the tides are controlled by the moon then we come on the next four lines in these lines the poet tells 
about the song of the skylark from the left side the poet hears the sound of the skylark singing as he leaves the earth and flies into the sky the skylark song is always the same it seems a musical score which may be compared to a skein of wool that is successively unwound as he sings in the sky and when he returns to the earth the song is as fresh as the one before the skylark pours out music without effort and yet he pelts his fresh song with continuous effort till he has split and spent all and there is nothing left so in these lines the poet describes about the skylark then we come on the sustained part of this poem in these lines the poet shows that the two natural sounds of the sea and the skylark which are putting to same the town of rail where life is shallow and devoid of vitality these sounds of nature because of their purity rise far above the sordid and confused human sounds of the town the poet says that human beings are supposed to be pride of creation and the honored lords of the whole world but they have now lost the joy and charm of the earth when all things were in their prime now the aesthetic and dynamic aspect of the human beings are in process of decay and disintegration this process will lead people to the state of dust which awaits them in death and which recalls man's original state of slime so like this the poet ends and here the poet totally criticizes the human beings so finally we come on the conclusion that thus we can say that hopkins hopkin is very clear towards his thought that human beings are going towards their last destiny so here we think that uh, hopkin's sensibility to beauty and it seems to be 